What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. I'm here with Spencer Gooderum from Corby Distilleries. Spencer, good thank to you, have you here. Man. Thank you for coming. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the invite, man. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to sit down, chat whiskey. We're gonna be drinking some, of course, and uh, always, you know, love to kind of share that passion with uh, passionate people like yourself. And uh, and chatting Canadian whiskey, I know, which right? is a good change, right? It is, it is, it is. Um, we don't get to do that enough on this channel, actually. So I'm happy we're doing this, and who better than with some of the best Canadian whiskey you can possibly imagine? Um, we have a whole bunch lined up, but before we get into that, I wanted to kind of get into Spencer's story because his name comes with some leg legendary status. So uh, I'll let you take it from yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. My uh, uh, like Rob said, my name is Spencer Gooderm, and one of the whiskeys that we're going to be tasting today is uh, is Gooderm and Wart's whiskey right there. So, uh, so if you made the connection, my uh, I have a bit of a family history in the whiskey business. My great 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 grandfather William Gooderm started uh, Canada's you know Canada's real really first commercial whiskey distillery. Uh, the first the first history of distillation, the first documentation of distillation in wow. Canada. Uh, was back in uh, 1769 in Quebec and back in that kind of era of Canada I kind of compare distilleries kind of like what craft beer is today okay. you have little local um, distilleries kind of in each community with right. a local guy making uh, you know making some product for the local community and Gooderman Wartz was really like I said the first commercial distillery mm -hmm. started back in 1832 and it, you know, a truly incredible part of Canadian history. I think that a lot of people forget, especially, you know, as Canadians, I think we forget. But Canada was really built on a foundation of whiskey. One fact I always tell at a whiskey tasting that always hits home with people, that leading up to the Confederation of Canada in 1867, fun to talk about now, 150 years ago, of course, uh -huh. leading up to the Confederation of Canada, the C Canadian distilleries provided more tax revenue than any other industry in the nation. Wow. So when you think about that, you know, the distilleries built the roads, schools, hospitals, libraries, they built the railways. Like this, this country was built on a foundation of whiskey. And, and I, think it's, I think that's something as Canadians, a lot of us forget. So it's always kind of good to reflect back and really remember how important whiskey was to yeah. this country. And, and Canadian whiskey was provided like worldly for a long time. There was no one for it. You know? Absolutely, for quality. Like, like leading, like in, by 1877, 1877, the Gooderman Awards Distillery right here in Toronto was the largest in the world. Wow. They produced 2.5 million gallons of whiskey every single year. Wow. Biggest and distillery in the world. In 150 Detroit. years ago, that's right? crazy. And you know, you can still walk those cobblestone streets down in the distillery district yeah. in Toronto. And if you have not been down there, please go and check it out. It Highly is recommend it. Incredible. It's beautiful. Incredible piece of Toronto and, you know, Canadian history. There's no distill distilleries in there now. There's the Mill Street Brewery and a lot of kind of fancy retail shops and few yeah. condos. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> no whiskey coming out there anymore, but you know, you can walk those streets. Yeah, and, and you uh, still have the nice... Sign, of though, course, of right? course. Every Beautiful time I walk down, it uh, gives me chills. For I can sure. imagine. I can imagine coming from that family. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. So William Goodrum started in 1832, and uh, that was seven generations between him and myself. Uh, in the family for three generations: uh, William Goodrum, George Goodrum, George H. Goodrum. And out of the family, we sold in 1923 to a gentleman uh, by the name of Harry Hatch. And Harry Hatch was. Uh, Harry Hatch was essentially the guy who consolidated the entire kind of Canadian whiskey industry. So when you talk about the founding fathers of Canadian whiskey, you talk, you talk about essentially five guys. You talk um, uh, William Goodrum and his partner James Wartz. You talk Hiram Walker, uh, John Philip Weiser, of course, yeah. and we talk uh, Henry Corby. And, and today is going to be pretty cool because we're going to taste all these whiskeys and and you know you're gonna we're gonna see how delicious they truly are yeah but I think probably the coolest part about this whole kind of portfolio of whiskey that I represent is that you know it truly represents the union of those founding fathers mm -hmm. of this industry so when we, when we when we think about those guys the whiskey barons the founding fathers you know I work for a company called Corby spirit and wine that's named after Henry Corby 
all the whiskey that we're tasting, every single bottle that we're tasting today was produced at the Hiram Walker Distillery uh, down in Windsor. And we're gonna be tasting uh, JP Weiser's and of course the Goodman Orts as well. So like that, that truly represents the union of those founding fathers. It's always kind of like a running joke at Corby. In our office, it's always a running joke that if we ever sit down with the prime minister, uh, we're gonna tell him to take all the faces off the bills and put on these guys' faces because <laughs> these are the guys that really, you really build Canada. It's you know? solid. I mean, that's incredible. That's just that history that comes from whiskey that we don't even know about. And I'm glad you're here today because a lot of these guys, you know, they appreciate the whiskey. They love Wisers. They love, you know, Lot 40, Pike Creek. Like, they love these, th these whiskeys, but they don't know where they came from, why they're here, like, you know, and how old they are, you know? So. Exactly. You know, whiskey... Whiskey is what it is. Whiskey is beautiful. We can drink it all the time and enjoy it, but there's, it's the stories that really make it that much more emotional and you can connect on it with a deeper level. You know? Definitely, definitely. More than, just the, more than just the delicious liquid. I'm just grabbing my water. Yeah, here. go for it. All right, so did you want to kind of introduce some of these and then? Yeah, we'll absolutely. Um, so, so, to, so to backtrack, um, I'm the Canadian whiskey ambassador for Corby Spirit and Wine. I do kind of Eastern Canada. So we have three ambassadors uh, um, to, to, to promote our education of these Canadian whiskeys. We have Dave Mitten. He's our global ambassador, um, an absolute icon of whiskey. Dave Mitten, if you're listening. Uh, and then we have <laughs> Colin McDougall on the, the West Coast. He's based out of Vancouver. Okay, uh, cool. And of course, me being based in Toronto, I kind of do all Eastern Canada. So our Canadian whiskey portfolio, uh, of course, JP Weiser's, that's our main focus at all time. We joke that JP Weiser's keeps the light on at Corby's. <laughs> and, uh, and then we have kind of our craft range, or we're, we're going more in the direction of calling it the Northern Border Collection. Okay. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna tackle both of those today. I'm excited. But I think, uh, I think we should start with Weiser's. Yeah, let's go for it. Right. Wait, you're the boss, man. Today, <laughs> today's, about, uh, today's about Canadian whiskey. So let's right. start with uh, J.P. Weiser's. So J.P. Weiser's, you know, started back in 1857. Um, truly one of the most iconic whiskey families in Canada. Um, a large brand family, you know, everywhere from Weiser's Deluxe up to our 18-year-old. We have um, special special bottles. I noticed that right here you've got the... Uh, you got the red letter. Yeah. Did you do a review on that? I did. It's an it's amazing whiskey. It's incredible. It's an amazing whiskey. Okay. Then you're in for a treat with the uh, Union 52. Um, so we're going to jump past uh, past some of the, uh, you know, deluxe and some of those flavors. We're going to go right to the uh, the Wiser's 18. Have you tried it before? I have. I, yeah. I'm, let's talk about price for a second here just because... Let's talk about price. Where in the world can you find an 18-year-old whiskey for... <laughs> Did you want to say the price? Sixty nine ninety five. Sixty nine ninety five. I mean, that's absolutely unheard of. There is no. There's six year old whiskey that goes for three times the price, and it's just incredible that Canadian whiskey can be bought for such an affordable price. Yeah, I always say Canadian whiskey is all about quality for value. You know, we make we make some world class whiskey here in Canada. Truly, and we're getting an 18-year-old, you know, bottle of whiskey for 69.95. It's uh, well, let's just have some and yeah, enjoy it. Like you smell the butterscotch as soon as it, like if you poured it. It's incredible. Yeah, it's um, the first time I tried Weiser's 18. You know, I I I liked whiskey a lot when I had a Weiser's 18. I was <laughs> I fell in love with whiskey. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Definitely see that. It's uh, it's such a beautiful dram. It's 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 kind of light in terms of the color. Yeah. It's not too dark for an eighteen year old. We only use um use Canadian barrels. Okay. So these have already had whiskey in them prior to putting our eighteen year old in here, uh, and of course eighteen years. So so the thing about Wiser's eighteen, uh, we like to call this the taste of Angel Share. This is truly you're really tasting the age on this. It's a hundred percent corn. So. Like most people, you know, just call Canadian whiskey rye. Yeah. There's actually no rye in this. It's 100% wow. corn. It's in used Canadian barrels, so there's not a whole lot of, you know, a, a ton of influence from the wood there other yeah. than the actual oxidation from the age. So you're really tasting the age on this. Like we said, call it the taste of the angel share. Yeah. What I want you to look for for a note is a nice kind of green apple note to it. Mm -hmm. 
I get a little bit off the nose. Yeah, you do get it off the nose, actually. Yeah, get a lot on the palate. Such a smooth whiskey. Like, it just goes down so easily. You know. This is the kind of whiskey I like to call the trouble whiskey because <laughs> you go through four or five glasses because it's so easy to drink, and then you're like, wow, I'm pretty yeah. happy. <laughs> uh, sessionable. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, that's good, though. Now, trust me, if I was not driving home, I'd be finishing all of these mm. glasses. But <laughs> I am shortly after this, so I'm yeah. not going to... Uh, Definitely understand. I might, I might save a couple of the a couple of the last drops for you, but um, yeah. What do you think? It's awesome, man. It's really, really nice. It's smooth, like I said, you get that apple. You get that. I would say like a caramel, yeah, butterscotch type taste. For sure. Um, Lots of just mature oak notes to it. Yeah. There's zero alcohol burn on the nose, whatsoever. on the palate, like not no burn whatsoever. So really, yeah. really nice. If um. If you're kind of new to Canadian whiskey, like this is a this is a can't miss. Yeah, this is one that you absolutely have to pick up. You know, it's uh, it's a beautiful bottle too. It looks it nice on the home nice bar. Bottle. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that you know you can share with some friends and family when they can come over. But again, you're not spending the three hundred dollars right. for that exactly. bottle, right? Yeah, it's something that you don't feel bad about sharing with the father in law or yeah. something. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's it, it. Blows my mind that this is only seventy bucks. Like, that's crazy. And you can't get an eighteen-year-old whiskey. You can definitely nowhere near get an eighteen-year-old Scotch for this price. It's, yeah. it's that's a fantastic price, and it's super sweet. I would say anybody new to whiskey would love this. You know, like yeah. if if you're brand new to whiskey in general, Canadian whiskey or not, um, this is the one to go for because you're not getting any of that alcohol abuse that you could on some of the other types of whiskeys mm -hmm. and uh, for an inexperienced palate like you get all the nice notes of a whiskey so I, I mean this would definitely be the one I would say very for. approachable for sure yeah yeah um, so I guess today we're not really writing this like a whiskey review like right exactly do, right yeah, yeah, so I'm we're not, gonna I'm not gonna mark any of these you know <laughs> you're not giving it a <laughs> score for me <laughs> not when I'm here anyway right? <laughs> no, no I mean this is more about you know illustrating the product and I think you know so far so good this is a really nice whiskey it's a good 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 place to start right yeah you know of course whenever we're doing a whiskey taste you want to start with something kind of on the lighter side mm -hmm. something that's very um, doesn't do too much to your palate right it's not overpowering it in any one of your senses yeah. so um, I didn't know that this was 100% corn yeah that's that's an interesting fact that's something I did not know yeah that's you know I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions about Canadian whiskey you know you know, we all went to college and, and you, you go up to the bar and you order your rye and coke yeah. or your rye and ginger, right? So exactly. I think we kind of all grew up in this uh, in this culture of just assuming that Canadian whiskey is rye. And it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of the biggest misconceptions and I get it all the time. And, mm. and, and you know, people just say, ah, oh, Canadian whiskey is 100% rye, but, yeah. but it's not. But it's not. Most basically. Canadian whiskey is corn based. Yeah. Or, or you know, corn based with a little bit of rye in it as flavoring. That's whiskey, right. right? Yeah. And of course, there are exceptions, like we're having Lot 40, uh, which we're gonna do right at the end, uh, yeah. for the reason that it's 100% rye, and you get those big, bold, um, kind of robust rye notes to it, so you, you do that at the end of the tasting for sure. Yeah. So there are 100% there are ryes out there, yeah, but for sure. definitely a big misconception that people just assume that there's rye um, in their Canadian whiskey. Yeah. Why is there 18? No rye. No rye. 100% Interesting, there you go, guys, you see? <laughs> We're all learning something here We're today. We're all learning something. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Um, let's move on. I am so excited for you to try this. This I'm sure This one's are. crazy. Well, yeah, I'm very excited about I'm this I'm going to pour one. this out first because I am. Like, I only have one of these bottles, so I've been saving this. I haven't had this in a little bit either. So. <laughs> when my, probably my second day on this job, um, literally my second day on this Thank job was sure. our like national conference at Corby. And that was just around the time that Union 52 got released. So we, uh, we polished off a couple of bottles on like my second day <laughs> in this job. I, I got this one, Colin uh, from Out West sent me this, and I've kind of been baby, um, I say I've been baby, it, but it's hey, almost, uh, it's, it would, I'm, it I'm would sharing have, the last little bit with you, my I'm friend. sure if you have, thank you very much, I appreciate it. There you go. Guys, Union 52. I, you know, I'm gonna bring that even closer, yeah, just so that these guys get a nice look at it. 
Union 52. All right. So Union 52 is truly a one-of-a-kind whiskey. When this is gone, it is gone. We did two different releases in Canada of uh, limited edition J.P. Weiser's products uh, in Ontario. We had the last barrels, mm -hmm. uh, which I know you've had, so I didn't bring that today. I really yep. wanted to show off the, uh, the Union 52 for you. Well, thank you. And Union 52 was a, was a West Coast, it was a, a British Columbia exclusive. Um, so if you're outside of BC and you manage to get your hands on a bottle, good for you, save it, enjoy it, <laughs> share it with some friends, some very close friends, um, because once it's gone, it's gone. I think they only have a couple of cases left in BC, wow. if That's any. Um, but this is like an exceptional whiskey. Let's have a smell and let's have a taste before we talk. All right. Again, no alcohol burn whatsoever. So good. Nice mouthfeel too. Very full. Oh. And just like the tiniest little bit of smoke to it, right? Yeah. Just yeah. nice and it kind of like, I, I think the, the smoke kind of really pulls the whole whiskey through your palate. You kind of get it at the top and it, and it stays, it stays all the way through the finish. Yeah, this is a beautiful but it's whiskey. Wow. Nice, well balanced. So let's talk about Union 52. So Union 52, the base whiskey. That Believe it or not, the base whiskey for Union 52 is red letter. Wow. We're talking 15, 16 year old red letter as the base of this whiskey. Which, by the way, these guys in BC are so lucky because they're getting that for seventy dollars a bottle. The base of which is a red letter, which, which is, is like a hundred and twenty, hundred and sixty dollar yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah. It used I don't to, even have a bottle. It, of this. The, the anniversary edition, which was this one, used to be about like one hundred fifty bucks. I think they they went a little bit lower because then the, they don't have any of the anniversary edition left, right? So they re released. Yeah, like, okay. They re released like a, I think it was a two thousand. That's so you got this in two thousand seven. Yeah, I got this a lot. That was sitting on, that was one of the whiskeys that I was saving for a special occasion, and then I'm like, you know. And then it didn't last. Yeah. <laughs> did it come in that nice big box? Like it did, yeah. I, I do, I think I. Somewhere. I He's got a lot of whiskey here. Not so <laughs> <laughs> supposed to tell him. Yeah, exactly. I don't so, know, I'll find it. Well, I'll, I'll show it off. I've showed it, I've showed it to the. To the you did do before. a review. Of yeah, that. and I gave it a solid mark. This is fantastic. Yeah. That was and so that's the base for this whiskey. And then we blended in, why it's called Union 52, we blended yeah. in 52 year old scotch. That's crazy. Into this whiskey. 52 year old scotch. So we had a few barrels of this uh, scotch that was distilled in 1964. And we had these barrels just sitting in our warehouse. And honestly, like they, they, they kind of were just sitting at the back of the warehouse, never got used for anything. And when they pulled it out, 52 year old scotch, it was, you couldn't drink it right. by itself, right? And, and, and I remember talking to Don Livermore about it, and Don Livermore is our master blender at Hiram Walker and Corby. And, you know, when, he, when, he, when, when they first tasted that whiskey, they were almost gonna just, just, just ditch it, just kind of redistill it and, wow. uh, and, and, and just pull the alcohol out of it. But they said, all right, let's, let's see what we can do with this. So they had, I believe it was four barrels that they brought down into one. That's how much was lost to the, wow, to the angels over yeah. the years. Wow. And so they, they, they turned four barrels into one and then we blended that into our red letter base. So there's about 4% of this 52 year old scotch in each one of these bottles. And, and you can really taste it. That's, that's yeah. what's giving that a little bit of smoke, right? Yeah. That's what's yeah, giving sure. it that kind of that extra, the extra body to it. Yeah, because like, you do pick up a lot of the, the same notes that you would get from the red letter, but mm -hmm. then you get that smokiness like you're like you're, you're talking about. And it's not. And if you if you don't have a chance to try Union Fifty Two or have it yet, it's not it's not an uh, an overabundant smoke. It's not in your face by any no, means. It's no. not. It's not. It's it's very subtle. It's kind of on the on the on the back end of it. Yeah. And just pulls it through the whole time. Man, that is really really good stuff, guys. I hope you get a chance to try this because this is my first attempt at it and wow, it's really, really nice. Are you speechless, bro? Or what is that? <laughs> I know. That's very it's rare for me, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I know. It's um, yeah, 
I, I, I drink a lot of whiskey, obviously, in the, in the <laughs> job that I have. And I can genuinely say this is one of the best that I've like ever had. This was a yeah, true. This is there. It, it was a it was a, a a master a master blend. Like this is incredible. So, I'm shocked that they sold this for so cheap because, the red letter I thought was underpriced at what they put that at, and this is like just that notch up. Because yeah. It's fantastic. It's wow. If any of your viewers are living in BC, you are spoiled. I hope you, <laughs> I hope you purchase several bottles. Uh, yeah, it pissed a lot of people off in Ontario. A yeah, lot of guys I, I were was, trying to get their hands on I was on. one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, um, you could spend a long time with this one, guys. A yeah. long time. Yeah. Really, really. I, just thank you for bringing that just like it's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. I was joking with Rob, I brought him a couple of bottles, but I said I'm taking the Unit 52 home with me because that's the only bottle that I have. He says he was joking, but... <laughs> I'm going to take one more sip before we move on. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. I'm going to save a little bit of that for later because I want to really savor it. Absolutely. I might, I might be able to spare another dram before I leave. Perfect. You. you can saran wrap it and keep it, <laughs> and keep it for tomorrow night or something. <laughs> So double still rye. Double I'm just gonna check, make sure we're good for time over here, and Absolutely. we're recording. Yeah, we're good. We are. It'd just... be a shame if we weren't recording. We'd have to drink all these again. Right? Damn. <laughs> Spencer, uh, there's been a glitch, and we need to repour and drink all those whiskeys. We have a very difficult job. <laughs> Someone has to do it, though. Someone has to do it. <laughs> oh, there you go, my friend. Mm. Thank you, sir. So, double soul right, you want to show that off for the camera? Yeah, right definitely. <clears throat> so, double still right, uh, a relatively new product, um, a couple years old now. This has been getting some phenomenal feedback. It's, uh, it's a line extension of our JP Weisers, of course. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we had Deluxe, and Deluxe is such a beautiful product. I didn't bring it today, but you know, that's kind of your, your, your just standard Hallmark Canadian whiskey. Yeah. Very, very trademark style, um, light, corn-based, a little bit of rye, very yeah. versatile. That's your... Good to sip, good to mix, good to do whatever. That's what I always say when I talk to bartenders. It's a very versatile whiskey behind the bar. You know, you can do a shot of it and drink it neater on the rocks. Yeah. So it can even, you know can stand up to an old fashioned or Manhattan. Those, yeah, for you know, sure. Those yeah. cocktails as well. So it's yeah. very well rounded. But we did we did want to kind of round out that portfolio with a very rye forward uh, Wiser's product. And this is this is what we came up with. It's double still rye. And and again, let's have a smell and a taste before we yeah. uh, talk too much about it. That's how I always like to run my tastings, by the yeah. way. I never like to uh, tell people what they're gonna smell or what they're gonna taste yeah, before exactly. they do, because it always, you know, plants the seed and then they yeah. uh, then they go with that, but um, I get a ton of butterscotch off the nose, mm -hmm. a ton. Like, I don't know how old this one is, but the mouthfeel is great, the the taste is amazing, and the fact that they're still not getting any alcohol, but what's the percentage of this one? 43.4. 43.4, no alcohol bite whatsoever, and I'm, this is not overly old whiskey, right? No. You may hear my son and my, uh, he, I mean, he's a little bit of a menace, so he's, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> Woke up from a nap, I believe. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> so yeah, none of that alcohol burn. Being yeah. a little bit overproof at 43. Um, and you're right, it's not an extremely old whiskey, but you're really, like, I love this whiskey, and I love mm -hmm. to get people's opinions on it, because we've been getting some really, really good feedback. I just, it's got such a great mouthfeel, like, it shocks me because you don't usually get that from a younger whiskey, let's say, right? I, I don't know how old this is. Like, it could it could be well within, like, you know, a very nice mature range, but it's just super nice tasting. It's, it's a nice mouthfeel, nice smell to it, a lot of butterscotch. A lot of butterscotch, for you sure. Know? Yeah. And, you're, and you're getting those rye grain kind of spice notes to it, too. Yeah, definitely. I, I love the finish on this. It's got a nice, um, lengthy finish, and the rye kind of, you know, it lingers. It stays with you. Yeah, yeah. The, it's an interesting whiskey. Don Livermore, again, our master blender, kind of threw everything at this whiskey. It's three different barrels that we have in here. Um, we've got uh, brand new oak, we've got uh, bourbon barrels, as well as used Canadian barrels. All right, you know what? I think it's the brand new oak, to be honest with you, because like, it just gives that 
full like I love whiskeys that are matured in new oak because they they get like this mature full taste to it and then are they toasted at all the, the barrels yeah they're, they're heavily charred the, the brand new ones are, are heavily charred there you go yeah, and you do like I was gonna say like there's almost like a bourbon-esque taste to this or even like um, you know some of the rye American whiskeys that have that rye forward but also like bourbon style to it right that's I'm picking up a little bit of that there but the bigger the, the big thing with this one and why we call it double still rye is is the is the type of rye that we're putting into this so we're using distillates from both a pot and a column still hmm. and and blending those together that's what really makes double still unique I think you know, I, I, again, talking about rye and the misconceptions about rye, I think one of the biggest things that people get caught up in is how much rye is in your whiskey. You know, is it is it fifty percent? Is it a hundred percent? Eighty percent? How much? How much rye? And people get obs obsessive about the percentage of rye in your whiskey. And really, and you know, and, and if you talk to Don Livermore about this, he's really passionate about it because it doesn't matter how much rye is in your whiskey; it's how you distill it okay. that makes the product wow. what it is, right? Because we're taking both pot distilled rye and column distilled rye, right? So you're getting those with our, with our pot still. We're, we're you know we're concentrating up those rye spices and we're making a nice heavy spirit. And then our column our column distillate is really kind of is, is, is balancing that out, right? It's it's pulling it back and letting you kind of you get that nice balance of rye. So you're getting the rye flavor. You're getting the you're getting the the, the, the pepper and the spice and some of those bigger robust notes. But it's a little it's it's very approachable. Yes, yeah, I would point. honestly. That's if you told me that if you poured a glass of that for me and didn't and told me it was anything younger than eighteen years old, I would be shocked because it it tastes and it is old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is and it is and what kills me is can you talk? It is about younger that? than eighteen. Is my point. Yeah. yeah, but can you talk about the price? Because what kills me is what you can buy this bottle for. It it's ridiculous. Yeah, like we were saying, quality for value for Canadian whiskey. Uh, we retail it for, uh, I'm not the sales guy, I always get our prices wrong, it's about $30. I about $30. I think it's thirty ninety five. dollars Yeah. Don't I think, quote me, that might so, not be right. Yeah, so roughly $31, $30, whatever, but... It's under 32 is my point. What are you going to, what sippable whiskey can you get for that price? There's there's very few, if any. Exactly. Right, so... This is, like, this This product is blowing people away. Yeah. This, um... Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get this wrong, so I'm, not, I'm gonna make sure we don't get this wrong for our viewers, but we just won a huge award at, um, at the World Whiskey Awards, and I'm gonna pull it up really quickly here. And you do reception, not have very reception, reception might not be here. quality. <laughs> it, um, I'm switching to Bell, guys, so don't worry, it's gonna be. <laughs> okay, I'm not getting reception. Um, we just won a killer group award at the World Whiskey Awards gonna bug because we, we we won have several awards i know Gooderham um won one believe it or not uh, jb weiser's hopped one one as well wow and double still took home a big award too and it's really bugging me that that's slipping my mind right now it won a um, big award guys it won a big award that's that's double what we need to know <laughs> it's uh it, but truly but the point is is that this is a world-class whiskey that's right, right? Yeah. this is a world-class whiskey that you're buying at thirty dollars thirty dollars and the lcbo and like i said like i i want like i keep reaching like thinking to reach down and grab another sip of it because it's it's surprisingly just really full and flavorful and and no alcohol burn whatsoever 43.4 percent guys if you've never tried a wiser's product i highly 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 recommend that you start with that because for that price you cannot go wrong you cannot go wrong and a great cocktail and whiskey if um if you're at home you want to make your old-fashioned manhattan Sazerac Boulevard, any of those kind of prohibition era uh, cocktails, double so right, you can't go wrong. It's. Uh, I'm gonna say that if you're a, a whiskey sipper, that's not gonna make it to a mixed drink. I'm gonna okay. be bold enough okay. to say that because I honestly think it's really, really nice stuff, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, Please nothing drink, wrong with. Drink it straight, absolutely. Yeah, nothing wrong with mixing drinks, and you know, there's a whole passion around mixed drinks as well, yeah. but that is definitely a sippable whiskey, in my opinion. For sure. Yeah. See, it's you're talking to a whiskey reviewer and the next bartender. So the bartender always <laughs> approaches a whiskey by like, all right, what cocktail will this yep. work well in? And uh, and you just want to sip it, which is always wonderful as well. But um, no, the double still, like I said, thirty bucks. That's thirty crazy. bucks. That's that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. There's no whiskey for thirty bucks that I'd rather sip, in my opinion. Yeah. 
and you're supporting Canadian economy at the go. end of the day, right? Keeping it Canadian, by the way, guys, and we're, we're doing the Glen, uh, Breton? No. I don't know. Anyway, the Glen Karen Canadian whiskey the glasses. Glen they got the nice uh, Canadian maple leaf at the bottom. All right, no. they're a little wider. I actually love these glasses. Yeah, these glasses are great. Because because when you have a concave top like that, it's kind of you're 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 trapping all those flavor aromas in there, and this is kind of like just dissipating them right at the top. Yeah. So with these, I like to put it like a good kind of half inch above the glass when I'm smelling it. You get a ton of that, mm. ton of the aroma. Um. So that was the that was the J P Weiser's lineup. The three I brought for you. So we went from like eighteen hundred percent corn, just really tasting that tasting that age. Union Fifty Two, which was that limited release very unique whiskey and then our rye forward uh jp weiser's which was which was pretty good yeah you enjoyed that i enjoyed all three of these i i, I liked watching it was that the first time you tried the double still that i've tried the double still but i mean i don't know you really appreciated that i did I was, so. uh, <laughs> that's that awesome really nice so this is one i actually haven't tried yet the pike's creek this is a very interesting whiskey so so like I said, we've got the J.P. Weiser's family, and then we've got our Northern Border collection. Uh, so we're going to be drinking Pike Creek, uh, Gurdman Warts, which we talked a little bit about, and Lot 40, which we mentioned as well, that 100% rye. Um, but Pike Creek is a perfect place to start. It's, uh, it's nice. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it. And it's, it's a pretty unique, unique Canadian whiskey for sure. So this is finished in particular barrels. I'll, I won't steal Spencer's thunder and he'll, uh, he'll explain it to you guys. Here's the Pike Creek, guys. So what we kind of tried to do with our Northern Border collection was really focus on a different kind of art of, dis of, of making whiskey when, when, when we kind of approached all of these different expressions. So Pike Creek is all about the art of maturation. So again, before we before we spill the beans, let's have a smell and a taste. You know, it's uh, we're we're not spilling the beans like Spencer just said, but I I pick up on the nose a little bit of molasses, mm -hmm. so that that's kind of a hint of what's to come, and a little bit of like a Coca Cola note. I don't know if you, you mm. pick up, yeah. That's interesting. Definitely get that molasses, that brown sugar. In case you haven't guessed, Pike Creek finished in a rum barrel. So, uh, again, corn-based whiskey, 10 years old. After 10 years, we're taking all that whiskey out of the barrel and we're putting it into a rum barrel. So it's 100, sorry, 100% corn base or? 97 corn, 3% rye. Okay. Just a tiny bit of rye just to kind of add a little bit of depth complexity. Okay. complexity. Um, but corn's really the star of the show here. Okay. Um, and again, 10 years in a, in a Canadian barrel and we take that out and then Put it into a rum barrel and that's you know that's what's giving it that beautiful aroma yeah, man, that's... the molasses get it i get a ton of brown sugar wow that's very different i really really like that very unique very approachable yeah like we're talking about whiskeys that might be a good starting point for someone who doesn't drink a ton of whiskey mm -hmm. Pike Creek, Pike Creek, Pike Creek. Super approachable. It's got a nice sweetness to it. It is a, it is on the sweeter um, end of the whiskey spectrum, so to speak. Uh, but it's got a little bit of sweetness. It's got those brown sugar, those molasses notes to it. It's corn-based, so you get that kind of underlying sweetness and that really beautiful kind of mouthfeel to it. Yeah. It really coats your whole mouth. It's Super, very yeah. creamy and buttery. It, it's, I would say that this is like the perfect transition for the rum or cognac drinker. If you're mm. if you're used to those types of, of spirits and you want to get into whiskey, start with this because it brings in all, like some of those flavors that you would get from a rum and it's sweet and it's rich like a cognac but then you get that nice whiskey finish as well, yeah. you know? It's really it, nice. It's interesting, right? Like if like if I close my eyes, I could swear that I was about to sip on a rum. A rum, right? yeah. That, because you, that's... you get a ton of, of rum aroma right off the nose, just a ton of it. But on the palate, it's unmistakably yeah. whiskey. It's a whiskey. Yeah, and, it's, and you can tell it's Canadian whiskey more than, you know. 
Uh, I, I will. I'm gonna. I keep on saying this, and it's probably annoying for you guys by now. But um, <laughs> no alcohol burn. No. And, and like, I'm really curious to know how. Maybe one day um, I'll get an invitation to the actual distilleries, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 we can do a live on, you know. Uh, Minimum because, ten thousand subscribers to get into the oh, distillery. Okay, so so uh, right. if you're so watching you this and haven't subscribed, please hit that button. There, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nice it's isn't it good though? It's it's really good. You know what yeah, I, I almost swore there, guys. It's funny that you would say that. Um, you know, it's 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 really got that Canadian whiskey taste because honestly, I find people who love bourbon like the Pipe Creek. Mm. It's got some of those sweeter notes to it. It's got that beautiful kind of full, full mouth feel to it. Mm. I get a lot of bourbon drinkers who try this and fall in love with it. Get that like, you do get that like vanilla. Like I get a little bit of vanilla mm -hmm. from this one and maybe even like a touch of banana. So that's probably coming from the rum casks, but that's also synony synonymous with uh, bourbon, bourbon whiskey as well. Mm -hmm. So, man, that's really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice kind of like sweetness. Absolutely. Um, guys, I'm highly biased, but my favorite whiskey of the day. <laughs> I just gotta double check, make sure we're good. We're not even at the twenty percent. Uh... So we're looking at a battery issue, is it? No, I, I think we're good. I just want to double check every every once in a while just Absolutely. to make sure. So, uh, Pike Creek was the art of maturation. And actually, I, I will mention a couple more things about Pike Creek uh, before we move on. Pike Creek, uh, the name is after a, an actual creek in Windsor that called the Pike Creek. Cool. So, our maturation warehouse is in uh, Hiram Walker. Again, that's the distillery in Windsor where all these whiskeys are produced right on the Detroit River there. Yeah. A lot of people don't know the scale of our whiskey distillery there but on any given day we have between 1.6 and 1.7 million barrels of whiskey wow. which wow. is a lot more barrels of whiskey than people living in Windsor <laughs> and, uh, and yeah there's not a lot of people living in Windsor <laughs> most those, of them work at the distillery yeah for those of you that don't know uh, Windsor is very very close to the Detroit border in the United States so uh, four hours away from the GTA basically yeah. four hours about four hours yeah, yeah. so uh, right right that's across the river from Detroit. That's right. Fun fact, it's actually south of Detroit, if you look on a map. There you go. See? So we're actually shipping north of the border when we ship to Detroit. That is an <laughs> I did not know that. Didn't I was know, about right? to say south of Windsor. Yeah. Good thing I, well, I kind it's, of spoke. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a beautiful distillery, though, truly. Um, we've just recently kind of started opening it up to... Uh, consumers we're gonna start really promoting that we've just opened up a whole kind of consumer experience with a full bar it's gorgeous wow. and uh, and and I was teasing you before we'll actually <laughs> get you down to the distillery yeah. because it is a, a phenomenal experience you know I I think a lot of people you, you know we're a big distillery we make a lot of whiskey and you know I have so many friends that are, that are so into like craft beer and, and, and drinking and eating local and stuff and and, and you know, some of them will say, hey, you guys are just a big, huge distillery, right? But every time I go down there, you know, you walk through it and you can feel the passion of the people that make this whiskey. You know, we are a big distiller. We have between 1.6 and 1.7 million barrels of whiskey, but right. we take time and care and we put love into every single one of those barrels. Yeah. You walk around those floors and the people will smile at you. You know, there's 150 hands that touch this whiskey before it ever gets into the, into wow. the bottle. Like it's small town hospitality, right? Like it, it's, it's absolutely, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, people make these products. Absolutely. There, we have our girl Christy in there that, that literally smells the corn wow. before she says, okay, it's good enough it's good to, to go. put in our, our whiskey. Like, of course we've got scientific tools to, you know, you know, measure the humidity and right. the moisture content of all of our corn and everything about that. But at the end of the day, it's Christy who picks up that corn, wow. smells it. And if there's any off smells, then she's putting that, and then and then we're shipping it off to the ethanol plant down the yeah. road. And that's something that's really important for our viewers to know because people think you know this is a big company. There's there's not enough manpower and attention to you know, but that's 
completely opposite, though. It's completely opposite. You this know? is crafted whiskey. Yeah. If you ever talk to Davinder Kurgamo, giving him a little shout out here, <laughs> the author of Canadian Whiskey, the Portable Expert. I think I have that um, somewhere around here. As actually. you should. As <laughs> you should. I do. Yeah, you do right here. Guys, if you have if you want to learn more about Canadian whiskey, please. My good friend Davin, please give his book a read. His second edition's uh, just about to come out, actually. This one it's actually. It's a Kerman Awards bottle on the front of it. I have it signed as well. Oh, nice. There you go. Beautiful. No, <laughs> Davin's a great guy, and um, and it's interesting. You talk about him, and 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 he, and he doesn't like the word craft. Oh really? Because people get so wrapped up in this craft versus you know micro distilling, and you know what makes craft craft. Mm. And you talk to Don Livermore, our master master blender. And you ask him what craft is, what he does is craft. And this is a very good example of craft whiskey. This Goodman Awards, okay? So this is gonna lead into it beautifully. Let's have a smell and a taste of this whiskey. Again, no alcohol burn. Super nice. And there's a whole bunch going on here on the palate because it, it's four grain, right? It's four grain. It's four grain. There, there's sweetness and there's a nice spice to it, and then it's it's kind of such a complex whiskey. It's funny, yeah. No, so like I was saying before, I never, whenever I do a whiskey tasting, I never tell people what they're gonna smell, what they're gonna taste. Let them experience the whiskey for themselves. And whenever I do a whiskey tasting with Goodman Warts, I got a, I got a lot, a lot of these, right? <laughs> like, what is going on with that? It's, it is, it's an extremely complex whiskey. And I think, I think that's what Goodman Awards is all about. It's about that complexity. It's about the layers that are evolved in this whiskey. The fact that you can sit down, sip it, sip it for a while and that whiskey evolves in your glass. So question, Yeah. why, why this whiskey gets the name Goodman Awards? Goodman Awards, yeah. I, I'm glad you asked, okay. So Goodman Awards, like I said, first really big commercial distillery in Canada. And the story of the story of Gooderman Warts, guys, fascinating. Gooderman Warts, William Gooderman, James Warts never came to Canada to be distillers. They came as millers. Okay, so they started uh, Toronto's first grist mill at the mouth of the Don Valley at the at the Don R Valley River. River, yeah. Yeah, uh, they started the first windmill there. It was a grist mill, and they and they milled grain. That's wow. what they did as a trade, right? So they started this in 1832. This mill. And they and they were businessmen at the end of the day. They had this very savvy deal, where farmers would bring it, bring in their grain. You know, they they have it milled, they take it away. But Goodman Wart said, no, you have to leave ten percent behind for us. Okay, ten well, percent of that grain has to be left behind for us. So they right. so they started just stockpiling this mass amount of grain, milled grain. Yeah, and it's gonna go bad, right? If you don't do anything with it. So they started distilling it, and that's how they became distillers. It was completely out of innovation, out of entrepreneurship that they became distillers in the first place. That's never what they set out to do. Wow. So you had these two guys that, that started a mill, found out that distilling it was a better way to keep, the, the, keep, keep it from going bad, right? And then all of a sudden, this massive market opportunity opens up, and they really capitalize on that. It's, it's really funny when you talk about the history of you know, kind of can Canadian whiskey in general, right? I always ask the question, I say, what do you, what do you think the one event in history was? For Canadian whiskey that made it into this huge industry. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say prohibition. Prohibition. That's what everyone says. Everyone says that. I go to a whiskey tasting, it's United Air. Prohibition, right? But it's not. But it's not, exactly. It's a you know cool part of cool part of history, the rum running and the Al Capone and the smuggling and yeah. the crime. We all watch Boardwalk Empire, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh but it's not. The Civil War is what really grew Canadian whiskey between 1861 to 1865. And during that time, you know, what is our main competition as Canadian distillers? It's moonshine. Yeah. Who's making moonshine? It's the, the southern states. They're not selling any moonshine up, up to the northern states during the Civil War, right? No. So all of a sudden, we have this massive market opportunity that Canadian distillers capitalized on. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the ones that Good and Warts capitalized on was that Civil War. And like I said, wow. by 1877, largest distillery in the world. So... The, the, the point of this little um, rant here is that the reason we call this four grain is to pay respect and homage to Goodman Warts who were first millers. And they would make whiskey back then with corn, barley, wheat, and rye, because those are the grains that they used to mill at their windmill 
before they turned it into whiskey. There you go. I'm going to give you guys a look at this bottle because yeah. we didn't do that yet. No, we didn't. <clears throat> there we go. Beautiful. It's a four grain. It's 44.4% 4 alcohol. We're still good. We didn't lose any. We didn't lose any. So four grain and really paying respect to the fact that these guys were millers before they were just Now, I've had this bottle for a while and obviously I've done some damage to it. Um, what I will say is this one opens up differently as it's, as it's, it's been, yeah. yeah. It, it's different when I started to now. It's more full, it's it's like it's it needed its time to breathe a little needed bit. Breathe a little yeah, bit, for it's sure. fantastic. As, Honestly, as many good whiskeys do. I, I mean, I find in a whiskey tasting that as you progress, it's it's hard to identify things, but each one of these whiskeys are so different, and this is really full and complex and really nice, and I highly, highly recommend it. Again, we're gonna go back to price because um, it's part of the reason why I did I started this channel is to get people to buy whiskey that they don't regret buying, and no one regrets buying a whisk or no one regrets buying. A, an affordable whiskey that tastes incredible. And mm -hmm. that's this. That's pretty much all of these. Yeah. And and um, you know, I spent two, three hundred dollars on bottles before and been completely disappointed. Mm -hmm. And that would never happen here. And I would if someone said, This is let me try this shot and then pay a hundred dollars for this bottle, I'd say, Yeah, I definitely would. And it's it's pretty forty four ninety five. Forty four ninety five. Yeah, there you go. My, my, well, I always say like if I if I can get this whiskey for forty four ninety five and I pick up a bottle that's ninety nine ninety five, it better be twice as good. Right. It <laughs> should be right. That, and exactly. and that like yeah. that's logical pricing like you know. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Like we don't find right. whiskeys that are priced at a hundred dollars that are twice as good as some of the really good Canadian whiskey that's. 40 bucks or 30 bucks. We keep dropping these comic, comic books comic over books. here. It's, um, it's because uh, Davin, um, Davin's book was moved, so. It was load bearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so four grain, Goodman Wartz, we were talking about um, these distillers that started off as Millers, talked about why these four grains are in here, corn, barley, wheat, and rye. And I think this, this, is, this is where I wanna talk about Kind of what makes Canadian whiskey Canadian, right? What, how, you know, how do we produce whiskey differently from other parts of the world? And and, and this is where I'm gonna, you know, compare us to American whiskey, okay. and, and not picking on American whiskey right. at all or bourbon or anything like that. Trust me, I love my bourbons absolutely. Um, just talking about reasons that they're different, right? When we talk about bourbon or American whiskey, they use a grain bill, right? A mash bill. Mm -hmm. So you have your 51% or more corn with your rye or your barley or, or wheat or whatever else you're using. You blend that together at the beginning of the process and then they mill it, mash it, ferment it, distill it, put it in a barrel all together, right? Okay. So it's a very kind of like a quality in is quality out approach to making whiskey, right? right? Um, completely viable way of whiskey. But in Canada, we do do it differently. And Goodman Awards is all about the art of blending. So we treat all of our grains independently through Every single whiskey that we make, all of our production, we always treat our grains independently. We have our corn, we have our barley, we have our wheat, we have our rye. We mill, mash, ferment, distill, put it in a barrel all separately, and then blend it together at the very end. So when we create Canadian whiskey, we have a total blank canvas, you know, to kind of craft the whiskey that we really want to make. Mm -hmm. So we can we can really we can really perfect that corn whiskey really perfect that barley, rye, wheat. We can really perfect all those whiskeys. And then we have so much control over blending that final product, right? We have different grains. They can be distilled in different ways. They can be different ages. They can be aged in different barrels. You know, there's so many possibilities and opportunities to create the whiskey that we're looking to create. So that's one of the things that often gets overlooked in Canadian whiskey. And again, I'm, I'm totally going on a bit of a rant here. <laughs> but <laughs> no, but honestly, uh, they, you're passionate this is, about this it, is right? interesting because, stuff, though. Because, you know, the word blend. The word blend is such a misunderstood 
word in the yeah. whiskey industry. Totally misunderstood, right? We, we joke with whiskey people, we say, oh, it's the B word. Because as soon as someone sees the word blend, they think it's a lesser whiskey. Yeah. When really it's not. When you're blending a whiskey, again, you have that creativity, you have that creative freedom mm -hmm. to make exactly what type of whiskey that you wanna make. And for the record, anything other than a single barrel whiskey is a blended whiskey. There you go. When it's single malt, you're still blending different barrels exactly. together. Yeah. We can call it mellowed or married or batted or That's whatever right. kind of word you want to use, but it's at the end of the day, it's, it's a blended whiskey, yeah, right? Exactly. So, I guess my little rant there is if you see the word blended, don't think of it as any less of a whiskey. And Canadian whiskey is all blended whiskey, yeah. but you know, make some world class stuff as we can see here. Yeah. So that's uh, that's four grain, the art of blending, um, a true a, a, a true masterpiece. Bro. It's it's super complex, guys, and like I really highly recommend it because um, it kind of gives you an idea of you know comparing all these whiskeys to each other is a great opportunity because you get to see the difference in the types of grain. And now we're about to try a hundred percent rye. We started with a hundred percent corn with the Wiser's eighteen. And it kind of changed throughout with the the balancing act, and then we we did Gooderham and Worts just before this. So Gooderham, Gooderham <laughs> and Worts just before this because it's got the four grains. All right, um, one hundred percent rye, hundred percent rye, block forty. In case you haven't seen this one before, yeah, that's really nice. That's lot forty, guys. This is this is the epitome of what rye whiskey should taste like. And correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but I find 100% ryes often have a nice floral note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get I got a lot of sweetness off the nose. Oh yeah, for sure. For lot 40, ton of sweetness. Like you a know, honey. Yeah. Okay, here's one. You mentioned banana earlier. For lot 40, this is, I don't know, it's a personal thing. I say this in whiskey tasting sometimes. Sometimes people agree, but you never know if they're just agreeing because the yeah. ambassadors say it or if they're really getting it. I get banana chips. Banana chips? Like crazy. Like the... Like dried, like you know those dried banana yeah, yeah, chips? Yeah, yeah. I used to eat those all the time as a kid, and I don't know why, but I get like just a ton of it off the nose on lot 40. Yeah, it does, it, like, again, I don't, I'm not sure the barrel's used for this one, but again, you get that like... Almost because of the banana, you get that bourbon type feel, and and bourbon is fifty one percent corn, but that, like you said, the banana is just you get a little bit of it. So again, so bourbon has to be at least fifty one percent corn, but the big regulation, of course, is that it has to be in brand new charred oak barrels. That's right. And so you nailed it, man. We only use exclusively brand new oak, heavily charred, oh. and 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 honestly, that's one of the most important parts that makes lot 40 lot 40 yeah. is the new oak on this because it creates balance, right? Rye grain is, it's, it's, a, it's a bold grain. It's got spice, it's got pepper, it's robust. It's, 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 it's rye and you need sweetness to balance that out. I think if you guys a look at this color because you can really see, you know, what Spencer's saying with that color. Um, Got a beautiful, like deep kind of copper look to yeah. it. A little bit of amber to it. Man. man, this makes me super excited for what's to come. We're gonna talk about that in a little <laughs> bit, but um, you know, let's let's smell and taste this one first. Okay? Cheers. Cheers. So this is this is rye in its simplest form, but also complex and also, you know, there's whiskeys out there that have a secondary market that's absolutely obscene, and <clears throat> I'm here to say, honestly, guys, don't waste your money, don't waste your money on the BTAC secondary market, don't waste your money on things that cost ridiculous amounts because what does this cost? Do you know roughly? Thirty nine ninety five. So. Roughly 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Um, man, <laughs> that, that is just really, really good stuff. And everybody, it's not just me, it's not just Spencer, it's everybody I talk to that talks Canadian whiskey always talks about Lot 40. 
And the reason is how good this is. This is just like, I haven't reviewed this yet on my channel and the review is coming shortly. Um, but man, if there's, if I had to say go buy a whiskey right now for $200 or less and be proud of that purchase, it's this one right here, right now. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean like- I love that, I love that. You know, and, and 200 bucks is a lot of money and you would think it can get you some really, really good stuff, but you can save $160. <laughs> By getting lot 40. By getting lot 40. So, and that's, that's $40 Canadian. Like for those of you that don't, don't know, $40 American works up to almost $60 Canadian. Okay, so. Um, on a good day. On a good day, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like our dollar just rapidly drops and it's good for the economy, tech, like believe it or not, because then we're able to sell to the United States and other countries and it helps our economy, but it sucks for the consumer like me that has to go buy something in the cell or anywhere else for that matter. But for $40 Canadian, I could, I could buy that. And man, I, I can't think of a bourbon that I've tasted that's better. That's better. <laughs> that's better. Simple way to put it, yeah. Canadian Whiskey of the Year twice, uh, Connoisseur Whiskey of the Year. This is a highly awarded, highly respected whiskey, globally. This is, whiskey is revered across the world. It is, like I said, rye in its simplest form, guys. It's 100% rye. It's distilled in a copper pot still. It's aged in brand new oak. The whole point of Lot 40 is to showcase what rye should taste like. Yeah. It's got a super nice, like, not overly smoky, but nice hint of smoke in there. It's really, really nice, man. I love the finish on it all, Forty. Yeah, and it lasts. It la Like, what's the percentage on that? It's uh, 43. 43 percent. 43 on the dot, yeah. Man, I'm still tasting it. And I sipped <clears throat> at least 30 seconds ago, or around there. Yeah, it lingers. It lingers. It's really in a beautiful way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the way that you want a whiskey to linger. Yeah, this, this whiskey has it's taken people by surprise, man. Like I, like, like people like yourself that just want to sip on a whiskey, yeah. that just want to sip it neat. They love the lot 40, but seriously, again, coming in from a, from a bartender's perspective, this has taken the bar industry by storm. Yeah. Bartenders love this whiskey. Perfect with like, just if you, if you guys like old fashions, please, if you have not made an old fashioned with lot 40, I beg you make one right now. Stop what you're doing and make a lot 40 <laughs> old fashioned. You will not regret it. And, and I'm a, I'm a whiskey sipper and because of Spencer, I got to try a lot 40 old fashioned. Um, and yeah, chart number five, yes. Thank you, Ray. Five. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Shout out to Ray. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic, it was incredible. So yeah. yeah, I definitely highly recommend that as well. If you're bartending, like I said, same with the double stole ride, we talk about those prohibition era. And, and, I, and I say that, but anything that you're looking for a rye forward whiskey for, like Lot 40, it's gonna nail the cocktail. Like it's such a good whiskey to, to build drinks around because it's got that just beautiful, solid foundation that you can play off in so many ways. You can play to the sweetness of Lot 40. You get that, because you get that aroma, yeah, right? Yeah, You can play with the heavy, the rye spice for it. There is so much you can do with it. We have people, so Dave Mittens, our, our global guy, and he gets bartenders all from around the world just sending him recipes and photos of stuff that they're creating because it's so unique and you can do so much with it. It's crazy, like I'm still tasting this whiskey. I haven't <laughs> sipped it for a while. What, what kills me is that like, I've tried, quite a few 100% rice, and mm -hmm. some of them are Canadian. Mm -hmm. None of them are as good as Lot 40, in my opinion. Honestly, like guys, I, That's I've not given- me saying that. <laughs> I've, given, I've given great reviews to 100% rice, but this one takes the cake, I promise you. I haven't had a Lot 40 drink, other than the, that old fashioned that we had. Yep. Um, I would say in a long time, like five years probably, and I don't know what I was doing. I don't know why I wasn't buying Lot 40 more often because, yeah. you know, that, that, that's something that happens in this channel. Like, we get lost in the journey and, and you want to try different things all the time. I, I tell my friends all the time that if I didn't have this channel, there's three or four whiskeys that I would just buy every day. Like, four every day, you know? And I would stop trying so many whiskeys because, you know, you spend a lot of money on the journey. It's, it's a, and this it's a is one of those island. ones that, like, if, 
whether you whether you want an expensive whiskey or not, if you don't try Lot Forty, you, you're doing yourself a disservice because agree. it's it's fantastic. It's really really good stuff. So yeah, yeah. So when you get done with the distillery, one of the things that we'll do is pull barrel proof cast strength Lot Forty right out of the barrel into the glass. And you guys, you guys are my witness that he just said that, so that that has to happen. It will happen, and I'll tell you, cast strength lot forty is. If you think that's good, when you have this, at, I believe we bear, uh, barrel it at fifty eight percent ish, and it is like out of control. It is one of the best whiskeys that I've ever had. It just, wow. it, you know, sometimes when you have a cask strength whiskey, it. It almost closes the whiskey up a little mm -hmm. bit, and you're just getting too much of that ethanol. But this, yeah. this like opens it. And you get a whole new profile wow. to it. I'm definitely curious to try that, and that kind of leads into what, what like, <laughs> what I wanted to want to talk about yeah. next because there's some really, really cool things happening with with Corby's in the next little while, and we don't know exactly when these things are gonna hit the shelf, but there's four, I think four. We're doing four. Four yeah. We're in particular. Four in kind. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'll, I'll let Spencer take it away here because... Uh, yeah. So we are releasing some new whiskeys. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of get out with it. It's fine. We've kind of leaked some photos here and there, so we don't need to be secretive about it. Um, we are doing a J.P. Weiser's 150 whiskey, okay. which is a completely new expression. We're not just slapping a new label on a Weiser's product. It's a completely new expression. A um, little bit older. I'm not going to spill the beans too much about that right yet. Um, but expect to see it on the shelves of the LCBO in the next uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, should wow. be in in mid. Next couple. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's sooner than I. Sooner than we thought. Yeah. yeah. And it's incredible. I've got a bottle at home that's unopened because I actually have my birthday on it. So one of the things about this whiskey is that it's going to be. So there's seven thousand eight hundred and twenty-seven bottles that we will produce of this kit. Of JP Weiser's one hundred and fifty. Only those seven thousand eight hundred and twenty-seven bottles. No more than that. And each one represents a week in Canada's history. Wow. All so right. from 1867 from Confederation until uh, July 1st of this year, there's been 7,827 weeks of Canadian history. That's pretty cool. And we made that a bottle for each week. And so I've got one bottle right now that's the week of my birthday. Nice. Um, so I haven't opened that one yet, but I did try some of the distillery and it I'm just is... just going to say my birthday's October 22nd and <laughs> <Right> Corby's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Talk to the brand manager, see what we can do. Um, or else you're going to have to find that one on eBay or That'll something be, yeah. and bake too much. This one, it. honestly, I don't think, like, I know a little bit about it and I'm not going to divulge too much, but... Uh, I do not think it's gonna last on the shelves guys so gonna, if you have an opportunity pick yeah. it up right away because it's gonna be gone as like as fast as it's on the shelf to be honest with you so. yeah we were doing some cool stuff with it and yeah. we're gonna have like this kind of platform where you can look up that week of your bottle and see what happened in in, in, in Canadian history of that week That's so it's really cool. cool that is pretty cool. super Canadian um, it's a beautiful whiskey on top of all that cool marketing stuff. A truly beautiful whiskey. I'm not going to say too much about it. I'll let you guys try it on your own. Um, but like I said, if you see it in the stores, pick up some bottles because it will not last. Yeah. Um, so that's going to come out for, for Canada 150. But we're looking in the fall to release a whole new Northern Border collection. So we've got the Pike Creek, the Goodman Wards, the Lot 40 right now. Um, and we've got the Weiser's 18. We actually kind of consider these four guys our, um, our northern border collection right here. And, uh, and we're releasing four more of these guys. And they're all going to be, it's funny, they're all age stated. They're all different and unique in their own way. And they're beautiful. And I'm just going to tell you guys because I'm so excited about them. I'll say that one last. We're going to be releasing a 21-year-old Pike Creek. Crazy that's finished in a single malt cask. We're gonna be releasing a 17 year old Goodman Awards. It's gonna be a three grain blend. I've tried that one again, highly biased, but it's my favorite of the four. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder why. <laughs> and, and like we were talking about, the good lead in with this guys. And, and honestly, this is for guys like Mark Bylock who had advocated for a cast strength lot 40. Guys like him are whiskey bloggers, reviewers, all of you experts, all of you have asked for a cast strength lot 40 
and so we have caved. We are going to give it to you. We are putting out a 12 year old barrel proof cast strength lot number 40 Man. that is like one of the best whiskeys you will ever have. I, I promise I you. I can it's, imagine that. It's ridiculous. This honestly, like, not, I want to show them the bottle just because I haven't actually had a chance to do that yet. Yeah. And I'm going to watch my footing as I do that. There's whiskey oh. everywhere. <laughs> So that's the bottle, guys. All right, really, really sharp looking bottle, actually. And then the last one there, guys, that I was mentioning, uh, we have that 18-year-old Weisers, and incredibly excited, we are releasing a 35-year-old Weisers. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about it. It's gonna be 35 years old, and... and can I just... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you guys the price because nothing is concrete, and because nothing's no, concrete, not. yeah. um, I don't wanna. I don't wanna get your hopes up. But we've been talking about price off and on this whole time, and you guys are gonna be blown away at what this is priced at. So I highly, highly recommend that you scour the <laughs> internet and make sure you find out when these four bottles are released because. If you don't have one of each, you are gonna miss out on something major in Canadian whiskey history because these are gonna be incredible. I think you said it right there, Rob. This this is history that we're making right now at Corby. This is one of the most anticipated releases of Canadian whiskey of all time. We are making world class products right now, and we're releasing some of like the most incredible whiskeys. They're all so look for them, guys. They're, we're looking at fall. Um, again, some of these depends on our timelines, LCBO timelines, all that stuff, um, all, all comes into play there, but we're hoping for like a September to November type of release for these. And they brought them to the Canadian Whiskey Awards in Victoria. We had, um, we had Dave Broom and some of those guys taste them. And let's just say that they were very, very excited about them. This is, this is going to make history and this is going to put, if we haven't put can Canadian whiskey on the map. Yet we are gonna we're gonna let's do it. let's say that it's, it's gonna be putting it back on the, on map. the map. Thank you. Well yeah. put. Back on the map. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely back on the map. Honestly, Spencer, this was awesome, man. Thank I, you. This man. I had a great time. Can I ask what was your favorite of the day? Honestly, I it's hard because it was tough. I know. As, as soon as I was list. like, yeah, this is my favorite, and then, um, honestly, if I had to choose. One man, why would you do that to me? <laughs> Put you on the spot on your show. That's fine. That's all good. It's all good. Um, I, I'm gonna go with the lot forty. Lot forty. Lot awesome. forty. Yeah. I mean, they were all awesome. Yeah. Um, but I'm thinking like availability and what I could just go to the store right now and buy and I could. I mean, the Gooderham and Warts, uh, the Gooderham Four Grain, sorry, um, is incredible. The Pikes Creek, incredible. Pike Creek, sorry. Um, the 18, awesome. You're never gonna get an 18 for that price. But when you think Canadian whiskey, and and we were talking about it, you know, a lot of people think it's 100% right. It's not. We know that. But this kind of gives you that expectation, and it blows it away with with the with the you know the virgin casks, and it's just a really really well made uh, whiskey. So. Absolutely. No, I think I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for putting you on the spot there, but I love to do this at the end of every whiskey tasting because um, people like yourself, they'll say Lot 40. I get guys all the time saying that they love uh, Goodman Awards the most or Pike Creek the yeah, best. They're, both, they're all and three incredible. This is the thing, right? At the end of every whiskey tasting, I ask that and I always get different answers from every single person that I hold the whiskey tasting with and that's what I love to hear. I think, you know, you know, for so long, Canadian whiskeys have this kind of misconception that it's been this, you know, this cheap, light mixing whiskey. And when I can sit down with people like yourself or other people I do whiskey tastings with, and they like different one, different whiskeys, it just goes to show what we can produce in Canada. We can make a nice kind of sweeter side of whiskey like Pike Creek. We can make a complex whiskey that like blows people away. We can make a hundred percent rye that gives you those big bold rye flavors. It doesn't matter what your palate is, yeah. we can make a whiskey for you yeah. right here in Canada at home. That's right. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can say about Canadian whiskey is it's diverse. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put it. Honestly, Spencer, I learned a lot today. I know these guys learned a lot today. Thank you so much for joining Whiskey in the Six today. And um, 
if you know if you guys haven't already um, subscribe because there's some really cool things happening and I'm gonna be definitely focusing on quite a few whisk, uh, Canadian whiskey reviews as the days progress and I, like this fall if if you don't know about Canadian whiskey yet you're gonna know about it and I guarantee you you guys have a lot of awards coming your way because some of the things I tried today are gonna be older are gonna be higher cask proof proof sorry or, or higher uh, alcohol by volume and those are all the things that you guys are looking for and and they're answering those you know those requests so it's awesome awesome man thank, thank you, you so, so much, much brother enjoy right. it man cheers enjoy guys it. go buy some canadian whiskey guys that's it <laughs> <laughs> cheers